Those of us who are here, Sir Kimball, Scott, Scott Badger, Badger, Kathy Doherty, Jason Doherty, Chris McAleer, Bill Terry. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here. Um, so current voter, let's see, um, two, three, four, five, six, we're all voting tonight. <laughs> Barely made. And um, we brewed, uh, everybody had a chance to read the minutes. And I move that we accept the minutes. I second that. All in favor of the motion? Say on, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so the minutes of the last meeting were accepted. And uh, if uh, any matter not before, um, not on the agenda that somebody in the audience wants to bring up, <laughs> <laughs> there being none, let's uh, move right ahead with Burr. All right. So Burr Phillips is here to um, help us with the uh, any changes that are needed for the uh, uh, the soils section of the. Uh, well, we have Burr come up here; it would be a lot easier. Yes. Burr, why don't you just come join us? Sure. Just I don't have to have my back for him. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I agree with you. So a little history in that uh, we put the uh, the section six minimum lot size by soil type in the. Zoning ordinance back in 1987, and then at that point, it was um, the soil scientist had the, the HIS uh, program that they were using for uh, determining lot size uh, by soils. And since that time, there has been more work on the, the whole process and has been replaced by the uh, site-specific soil mapping standards, which is what we put in. Uh, we replaced just the HIST language with the uh, the soil site-specific soil mapping standards, and it turns out that that just by um, noting uh, that to use the document. Uh, that is put together by the uh, soil scientists of this document, which I emailed to all of you, um, that there are some items in it that we have to specific be specific about in our, um, in our zoning ordinance. So um, does anybody, I hope all of you had a chance to go through that. Anyone have uh, questions that Burr might be able to help us on since he's well versed in this? I have, I have a couple of dumb questions. Okay. And, and that is, in reading this, in, in effect, does that have a, is there any opportunity that just a simple review of the soil is going to create a, a lot size of, uh, <coughs> Is overly large, or, or is there a, a rough estimate, perhaps, of, of what we're looking at in terms of sizes of lots that are associated with the review of this kind, or is it all over the lot? Is it a possibility? Yeah, well, I think probably people, I don't know how much experience you have, but this is a background to this whole thing. I have said, oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. So, so, so when they when they came up with the hiss or the or the newest one, the scientific soil mapping, and the state standards, which are a little bit in between there, but what they're looking at is they're basically saying that what they're trying to protect is to prevent the maximum amount of uh, too much nitrates going into the soil in too small of area. Mm -hmm. And because that, you know, if you get too much area, then it's like five milligrams per liter of nit uh, nitrates into the groundwater, and then you have a well, and then people are drinking it. To, Called, uh, called, called the blue baby syndrome. So babies essentially are starved from oxygen. And mm -hmm. So that's, that's the whole intent of this. So for all these lot size and standards, that's the whole goal of it is to say, okay, depending on the type of soil, the texture of the soil, that's all different groups, and um, the slope of the soil, you can only attenuate or sort of dilute so much nitrogen. Right. So 
I guess to answer your question about can you end up with too big a lot, probably not. I mean, because you're still, the goal is to end up with five milligrams per liter, whether it's a teeny lot or a big lot, it's just <coughs> some lots have more capacity than other, I mean, some soils have more capacity than others. So some communities, such as our own, which has a very distinct kind of soil pattern, is more likely to have to large to be larger lot requirements, and, <laughs> and, and it can be dependent, obviously, on the micro. Right. Even on even on a on an acre lot, you could have. It's not uncommon to have two or three different soil types within that lot, so they have to wait between those different soil types. I mean, so it's all just it's just very small scale. The, the, other, the other flip question is is that is there any remedy that's allowed? For example, engineered septics or other kinds of situations that would enable uh, a landowner to, yes, be faced with this and then say, yeah, I appreciate that, but, uh, you know, I live on a rock. <laughs> I, I think there was, there was a, another intent because, I mean, I'm curious why this varies from the state you know, what the state allows, because there's a difference between them, correct, in terms of septic and... It's um, minor. But I think Jackson, to some degree, wanted to promote larger lots, and so adopted a more stringent standard as a way of promoting larger lots without doing it in a snob zoning sort of way, where you say every lot right, has right, to be... Right, but in effect, if anybody acres. can read this who's half knowledgeable mm -hmm. could look at this and say, yeah, that's exactly what the intent is. Right. Without uh, saying so. Well, sorry to answer your that's question. A, that's a question we have. Is, is that an underlying pot opportunity for someone looking at this to say, you know... That yeah, I think Jackson has, Jackson has generally wanted to control development, um, not entirely shut it off, but you know, keep it limited and controlled, maintain the character. But it also conflicts with our development plan, which we've described as saying that we, that's not what our intent is, and we're looking to get affordable housing. And we're looking I, to I think that's that's a more current plan than when this... I'm just trying to figure yeah. out what the... I think, I think that the pendulum is sort of swinging, basically. I'm trying Jackson. to understand, I'm trying to understand yeah. where it is. I have old yeah. bias one way or the other. I think Jackson was, was reacting both to what happened on Tyrol, you know, which was sort of overdevelopment by almost any standard, um, and what was going on in North Conway, which was more so, I'd say, development not controlled as opposed to overdevelopment. And so Jackson, I think, said we need to really, you know, make sure things don't get overdeveloped. And now we find ourselves in a situation where because of how we've, how we've controlled development, it's led to, you know, increased property prices and, you know, the difficulty of families to move in because of the cost of um, property. It makes it so that it is very difficult to live in town and work in town. And if you're a teacher, it's very difficult to live in town. And so I think the mood of the town in some degree is changing, saying, well, maybe we went a little too far. We still want to maintain the character. We don't want things to get, we don't want th still don't want things to get overdeveloped, but we do need to maybe control development not so much in terms of limiting it, but maybe focusing it on some of the things that we feel that need to be. And that gets my second question. In my humble opinion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, are there different engineering things, as, as Bill said, like like a clevis multrum, or what is it, yeah. that what that was called? Clevis multrum. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Could something like that overcome a soil issue? Well, well the, the answer to the question is, there's complete technology available. I mean, you, if you were, if we were in Massachusetts under Title V regulations, if you were to put in a recirculating sand filter or a textile filter in as part of your system, you can now shrink your lot size down because they <coughs> remove nitrogen from. Those are proven to remove a certain percentage of nitrogen. So there's a ton of technologies that do that. Unfortunately, New Hampshire is not that sophisticated. There's nothing in New Hampshire's state, you know, regulations, DES regulations that would allow you to go any smaller than what's in the state's regulations. They, they are not <coughs> that sophisticated. You can't, there's no provision to allow treatment to reduce to the massive. The state always says you have to have meet their minimum lot size no matter what, because their concern is that if that system fails, the treatment system fails, 
um, or something along those lines that now you, we've sort of boxed ourselves into a corner where you can't go back to a conventional system. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that, that's exactly a problem I ran up against in Massachusetts with a piece of property that uh, had, had a little bit of a wetlands issue to it, so, but it was like two acres that we owned, and we couldn't develop it because of that, and we, we suggested to the town, well, what if we put in a totally different type of system? And they said it didn't matter, it, because somebody could revert back to the normal system, septic tank, whatever, so you can't do it. I mean, maybe things have changed. Right. Still on the property, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it may, I'm not sure yours may even more wetland focused than the minimum lot size and standard, so I'm not yeah, okay. sure what the situation is. But just in New Hampshire, unfortunately, we're just not that sophisticated on a number of things in the department, and, I mean, in the wastewater department. So, so that, that brings up a good point for me, and that is, is that there we have lots that are certainly fairly small. In town, there are lots of all varying sizes, mm -hmm. from several hundred acres to half-acre lots. And um, are those lots that are undeveloped then restricted from development, as, as Chris's lot was, or, or, or it all depends on what the lot capacity is and wetland, you know, other features. I mean, if it doesn't fit this, or even if it, you know, right. the, if it does, if it doesn't fit the, if it doesn't meet the lot but, capacity well, requirements, they are, they're. You just can't do it. But can't. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think if if it's a lot on record, so long as it meets the state septic requirements, you can build on it. Is that correct, Sarah? You don't you don't have to meet our soil requirements. If there's a he's correct in that if there's a lot if it's a lot of record, say it's a fifty acre lot of record, and it doesn't meet this requirement. The state will give you a two-bedroom septic system design for those 50 acres. Right. So if it's a if half a lot, quarter of an acre and it doesn't need it, the state will still give you a two-bedroom. They really? so it's two-bedroom. It's sort of if you keep up with the requirements, they revert back to two bedrooms. And the only the only reason they would completely shut you down if it was all wetland or you couldn't get 75 feet, you know, or from a stream and you were sitting in the groundwater. And there's certain situations they are, but most any lot they will work with you. To give you two bedroom on, but if you, but it could be a fifty acre lot, and there's still whatever it was a lot of record at sixty seven. Six slope and you're going to be two wetland. Hmm. Okay. So originally, uh, Jackson was just two acre, two acre lots in the rural residential, and one acre in the village district. And so in eighty eighty seven, we changed it to the minimum lot size by soil type. Wasn't there once a, a frontage issue too, like 100 feet? On the the, we still have the frontage, I don't think it's changed. So you still have that minimum 100 feet right. frontage? Okay. Yeah. Right. Still About 200 and two, 50. 200. My, my take on it is Jackson is 50 minimum? For residential. Residential is 200. 200. My take on it is Jackson's adoption of the site specific standards. They're, they're using the most, the latest science. On them, whereas the state is actually lagged behind on it and the other one. So I think what Jackson is doing makes, from an engineering perspective, makes complete sense. But the, I guess the other thing I would say is some towns have two minimum lot size requirements. One for this, which is just purely wastewater requirements, and then other towns say, look, I want bigger lots to, re, you know, to, for, to maintain <laughs> rural character. So they'll have certain sections of the town where it's a five acre minimum lot size. Mm -hmm. And so even though you could get you know, two or three maybe under this one, they're still only saying five. So this sometimes there's two standards. One, what they want from a planning perspective, and then two, this is just a wastewater nitrogen perspective. Mm -hmm. two ways to do it. New Hampshire's not alone in It's also right. Massachusetts right. and Connecticut. <laughs> maybe put a municipal sewer in, and then, you know, then there would be zero, right? I mean, so then you can build on anything. So you need some sort of zoning if you did put a municipal or some sort of sewer in. Thank you. Sure. That's the best explanation I've heard. That's very good. Thank you for asking those questions. Because it helped me too. Yeah. Right here. So, well, the thing is, I know just from redoing plans and everything, you know, I think people come in and say, my lot's not big enough to put a septic system on it. And I, said, and I can say to them, look, we could actually design and build 
four septic systems for that lot that would all work and function completely properly, except for the nitrogen portion of it. So that's why you're only limited to this. They see this big lot and they think, how come I can't? They don't understand there's the component of just mm -hmm. not putting too much nitrates into the soil. You know? Interesting. So I'm assuming it's the nitrates that move the furthest of all the pollutants just from one line that was in there that's saying that the uh, standard design takes care of all of the other contaminants and that it's the nitrate that we have to Yeah, most of the other stuff is pretty well treated if the system's designed properly. But, I mean, there's still going to be phosphorus and some of those other things in there, but nitrogen mm -hmm. tends to be the one that, that is the health concern and migrates the furthest. So. It, it, it's the one that migrates most. Right. Mm -hmm. In phosphorus becomes an issue on lake and watersheds and those things too, so there's another component in there and some other places, but not so much here. So the, I guess one of the side comments on the minimum lot sizing is how this sort of came up was under, this is relates to zoning two, is under accessory apartments. Mm -hmm. Under 9.2 it says this lot, the lot on which this accessory apartment is proposed is sufficient, sufficient size to accommodate at least two dwelling units according to the requirements of section six. So if you want to put that accessory apartment in it, you need two of these minimum lot sizes in there. So if you take the literal interpretation, if, if if the minimum lot size is, call it an acre for whatever the soil happens have to be, then you need two acres of it. And that pretty much, that seems to be eliminating many, many people from being able to put a one bedroom or a two bedroom accessory apartment in there. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what, for the last couple months, the way I've been sort of interpreting it, I think there were some emails that went around and people agreed. And, it, and how far astray are we at that point from the reasonable septic requirements? Well, the thing is this is our soil thing kind of gets us, you know, pretty much on target for that first dwelling unit. Right. But then now you're saying when we require the same amount of land for, you know, the second or the, the, the uh, accessory apartment. Are we now are we now requir requiring fifty percent more land than would we would be required by the septic well, requirements? This, yeah, that's, that's well, this says two dwelling units. So I actually, when the first thing came up, I spoke with the zoning board about it just to see how mm -hmm. they would interpret it. And he said their literal interpretation is that if <coughs> if, if the minimum lot size is right. two. You yeah. say you're going to need two, four two bedrooms. Right. You know, right. So, so what's the difference between a dwelling unit and a, an accessory apartment in terms of septic? Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty significant because if you go by the this, the new septic soil mapping standard, mm -hmm. this standard, <clears throat> the part the town didn't adopt is there's a model ordinance in there, zoning ordinance in there, and what it basically says is if you have a one or a two-bedroom dwelling unit mm -hmm. that then you only need 0 0.6 times the minimum lot size. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing two times that, you only need 1.6 times well, Actually, it says, um, and this whole section is something right. that we probably should have added when we put it in, but uh, didn't realize it. And it also says for a duplex use, where the total number of bedrooms in the building shall not exceed five, the lot size shall be increased by 40% of the minimum lot size determined. Right. So in that case, if you have, um, you want to put an accessory apartment on and the whole, it, it, you know, all in one building, and there's only five bedrooms in the building, then you, could, you would only need uh, 1.4 uh, lots. Right. And it also breaks it down for, um, multi uh, multi-family units where you have you know if you had an apartment building or more than a duplex you know several maybe a condos <clears throat> that if it's if you have one or two bedroom units they say you can then have it uh, 0 0.6 for each of one or two bedroom units and for a three bedroom unit it would be 0.83. And so what they're saying is that these lot sizes are designed for a normal house with you know four bedrooms, which is what the state goes by right. for one. So 
And is, is, there is that the measure of four bedrooms? I guess that's the other question. Right. Is, that's, is that, that's, that's the normal minimum lot size okay. is four bedrooms. That's, that's right. the basis for it. Okay, thank you. Which is assuming 600 um, gallons per day of effluent. Right. So, so I guess on two that I reviewed since this has come up, in uh, one of the instances, or maybe actually both the instances, there was a three-bedroom house plus either a one or a two-bedroom accessory apartment. So that's the three-bedroom is 0 0.83, and the one and the two is 0 0.6. Mm -hmm. So I've just made sure that they had 1.43. And if they had that, then I said, I think that's a reasonable interpretation of the regulations, which I may be sticking my neck out a little bit, but I, but I had to bounce off some people in the town. And they mm -hmm. think that was reasonable until you guys come up with whatever. <coughs> so are we at whatever. right now sort of saying opposite things by both referring to you know, we referred to this for using um, using the the charts mm -hmm. as far as minimum lot size, but, you know, but you, the soil categories and so on to get okay. what minimum minimum lot size for a dwelling, okay. uh, and then we also say that if you have more than four bedrooms, you know, five bedrooms, and there's a formula for that, take the number of bedrooms and divide it by four. In other words, you know, prorate it for that. So we go for anything bigger, but we don't go for anything smaller, which actually was included in the, you know, the month, which we were just talking about. And so it may be that what we need to do. But, but for the accessory apartments, we say you need to, currently we say we, you need to double the land. Right. Right. So on one hand, we're saying you need to double the land, but then the regulations that we refer to sort of Paint a different picture. Right. Is that correct? Yeah, right. a ball board. Um, I know we're not using. We're using one thing for one thing, and then, and then sort of specifically say something else. Just the, the town didn't adopt the one that allows the, right. that portion of it. Right. They just right. adopted yeah. lots. So but that's just right. right. So I mean, so maybe we ought to consider. I think changing we, our. I think we should regulation. elaborate. Um, so we have. In the zoning ordinance in section six, we say what to do if you have a, a larger than a four bedroom house. So I think we ought to add in if you have one smaller, or two. one or two, or um, the one thing I wanted to make sure is that that we're doing this, the one or two would be for um, multifamily dwellings like duplex or accessory apartment as opposed to just a standalone in a single lot because then unless there is a way that if you have a, a two bedroom house in a lot and you then just have a two bedroom septic system uh, then you would not be able to expand it. I don't know if those regulations are what the what the state would have. Uh, I guess I didn't completely Look, so you say, sure okay, so you say, well, if you only have a two-bedroom house, yeah. then you only need uh, 0.6 of the lot, lot size. Right. Okay, so then later on, somebody wants to expand the house right. and sell it to somebody else. And so now it's a bigger four-bedroom house, but it's still the lot is only only a two size for them. only size for for, for right. two bedrooms. Well, I guess my opinion on it would be that that you would never allow a lot a new lot to be created for less than four bedrooms. So so even though you might you know you may, you may have a, a three and you know, a two bedroom accessory apartment, mm -hmm. so that would be a little bit bigger. But you would never allow just a two bedroom on a new on a newly created lot. So that would I would say one one dwelling unit is, is the minimum period. That's how I would. That's how that would be my interpretation on it, and that's how the state. That's a, that's how the, the state, state does the state. it. They so, just never allow less than six hundred gallons per day. Is how the state does it, unless again it's a lot of record. Then it's then they have to right. work with that. Then the lot will be sized based on. So we would need to have that when in the in the language for the zoning ordinance. Right. Do we so need it in the language, or do we need to refer to the state's requirement? So, or can we do? In other words, do we have to? Do we have to establish our own language? <laughs> uh, 
and, and put specifications on it, or is it possible to make reference to to avoid potential conflict between our language and the state language? Uh, I think we have a clause in our zoning ordinance saying that um, if there's a conflict between us and the state, that whoever is a most stringent. I guess I'm asking which is easier to administer from the perspective of someone trying to uh, comply with our requirements. Well, yeah. I think if you're using the fix of the soil standard, you should have your own for the other, you know, for the two bedrooms and three bedrooms. I think you should have that in the zoning ordinance. Okay. I, I, and, and that I would make it clear that 400 gallons per day is uh, 600 is the banana, four bedrooms and three bedrooms a day. That's what my suggestion I think if you start trying to refer to the state, for part of the interpretation, then things start to get okay. things. I see that all the time where things start to get mixed up because the state does it a different methodology, and then people don't know exactly what to do. So I think it's clearer if it's just spelled out in, in yours. Either that, or you just completely abandon all of this and you go to the state's requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes it really simple. But yeah. I'm, I'm still a little confused. Um, so you're, you're ahead, ahead, you're ahead of me because I'm more confused. <laughs> 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 So you, you, you want to initially establish a, uh, a lot size that would fit four bedrooms. Right. And if you add a fifth bedroom or a sixth bedroom, then you, you increase the, uh, you know, the, the area that you need. But if you do a two bedroom, you don't decrease the right. area. That, I mean, to me, you've just put a, a two bedroom lot, a four bedroom lot. Well, you just put a stop to affordable housing in the town right, right. because you're you know you got people that a teacher that might want to build a two-bedroom home or a, you know with a loft or something like that and and yet they're, they're not getting the compromise that you get on expanding it am, am i correct there yeah i mean the lot's going to be bigger than it needs to be from that perspective yeah. Yeah. you can still build a smaller house it just right yeah. right but, but that may be, again, the mood of Jackson, I think, you know, it, it's changed, and that may be something to look at as a way of allowing more development, if that's the intent. Right. That, that's gonna, what that's going to effectively do is back you. It's not going to make as big a difference as you would think, because now it's going to back you down to the state's standards. So the state's probably going to control in that situation. You know what I mean? Because a two-bedroom in our town still, our two bedroom, a two-bedroom in Jackson is probably going to be smaller than a four bedroom from the state's regulations. So the four bedroom from the state regulations is what they're going to have to make create the lot size from. Now, none of this, I would suspect, would be retroactive. In, in other words, if uh, you know, if a house was originally a uh, you know two bedroom home, right. and they wanted to expand it, um, they they maybe could not do that without, or, or just, you need to, you know, you, you can build a two bedroom home on a four bedroom lot, yep. but if you got it, let's say a two or three bedroom home, how do you, how do you expand that? Well, I think so, I mean, so long as you, you have enough land that, re that it meets, meets the state requirements at that point, mm -hmm. then, then you can. I don't, I don't think our soil requirements control it at that point. Would that be part of the it, review process the, then, it, if you're reviewing the, uh, would, would that be like a proposal to the build, building inspector? It'd be part of the building permit process, yeah, right. But when I review septic system design, I always look to see when the lot was created. And I use that 1987 as the magic number for me. I know if the lot was created since 1987, they're good for four bedrooms on that lot. But if I see that the lot was created prior to 87, then I, I make sure that they've done the density calculations to make sure it still you know, meets our minimum lot size. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they get back down to a three or a two for that lot, depending on what the... You know, no, I'm not... Okay. I mean, it seems to me that it could also be interpreted such that you would only need to look at the state requirements in that situation. I mean, I don't think we have anything that specifically mandates retroactively applying the soil requirements as opposed to state requirements. Well, the, actually, in looking at the chart for the state requirements, it is very similar to the chart that's in the uh, site-specific. So it just, the numbers, uh, 
you know, looking at, at the chart they have, it depends on what category soil and um, what the slope is. And then you, you just find where, so you have a category four slope and uh, <coughs> soil and it's on a 15% slope, then you can have 89,000 uh, square feet for your lot. Uh, now, if you looked at that same thing with the state, it's just slightly more. Okay. And so they have the same breakdown as far as six categories, slightly different definitions of the categories, but they're basically the same. Um, and then the slope categories are the, are the same. And so it's, there's a, the chart is very similar. The state is just a little bit more lenient on number of square feet for that particular soil type and slope. The, the, other, the other factor in there is the state doesn't allow you to count the area of land within the protective well radius. So if you have a well with a 75 foot radius for a four bedroom house, mm -hmm. you can't count that towards your lot density. Okay. In Jackson, with these standards, you can count that land, and that makes sense because it's not like the wastewater moves up to the well radius, and then, I mean, and then that soil stops treating it right at the well radius line. It's still treating <laughs> it's still it, you know what I mean? It's yeah. still treating it, so I think what Jackson does makes total sense to me, but I'm okay. not sure why the state does it. But. So that, that we're, we're more stringent one way and less stringent another. But it, 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 it averages out? Is what I well, no, state, most of the time it still works out that the state's more lean. Oh, almost every, I, I've almost, I don't think I've ever seen a time where Jackson was more limited than the state's no. But it is a <laughs> significant difference. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's maybe it's 20% different or something like that. Would that make the difference between somebody being able to afford to buy the property or put an extra accessory on oh, there? Yeah, maybe 20%, yeah. Yeah, that, that's quite a bit, isn't it? Well, if it makes the lot size 20% bigger, then that's the... That's the difference, right? That's the difference. So it's a lot. I don't know how, how much more you pay for a lot that's twenty percent bigger than the state's requirements. Then that's right. the difference in cost. Right. Paid more, but not twenty percent more. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just the lot. Otherwise, everything else is going to be the same. The septic system construction is the same either way. No right. I think where I think where it would make a bigger difference is in a situation where someone has a two-bedroom. Uh, you know, unit on a larger lot, and that twenty percent may mean the difference between adding, you know, one or two or three additional bedrooms. So it might limit the number of additional bedrooms that someone right. could. This is really the accessory apartments where it brought it up. Right. That's exactly the difference. Is that right. little difference makes a difference between an accessory right. apartment right. or not? Right. Right. And so I that, think in a lot of cases. And I yeah. think that we can change that. And right. It's justifiably because of that is in the, uh, so the model ordinance. And so if we had a situation where we're sort of using <coughs> sort of a soil-based system for the initial subdivision, but then using the state requirements for accessory apartment, you know, additional bedrooms and that type of thing, is there any well, sort I think of just by in, in doing I it that way. I think, but just by saying that if you have an accessory apartment, you don't need two full lots, you know, two right. four bedroom lots, but you would need if it because we say that accessory apartment um, can have no more than two bedrooms. So your accessory apartment is either a one or two bedroom, and so that would mean you're adding on a one or two bedroom. Point six. It's point six, or if then if you have the the clause that if you have no more than five bedrooms in the total house then you could be 1.4 and right. have that and so that would then make it possible for somebody who has maybe a smaller house or a house that you know a big house that then they want to carve off part of it as an apartment because now it's just one person living in the house and they need some extra income and mother so, you know, mother, mother in law apartments like, and in that case, then they would still be, let's say, within the, the four, four bedroom, and so that they could do it right on that lot. Right. I mean, the last two that I reviewed, they had 1.8 and they had 1.5. 
And so under the literal interpretation, neither one of them would be allowed to add an accessory apartment. I, again, I, after talking over, I defaulted to the model ordinance that requires mm -hmm. the one point basically four, one point four three in those mm -hmm. cases. So those were yeah. approved those. Is the, the hurdle to let's, is, mm -hmm. is the hurdle to let's say add two bedrooms higher than the hurdle to add a apartment with two bedrooms, or are they the same? That'd be the same. They're the same. Okay. It should be the same. Right. But it doesn't sound like it. No. No, I mean that's well, because when we did the accessory apartment, um, we weren't <coughs> weren't thinking about the fact that. Um, the state defines a house lot as four bedrooms. I, I don't think that was came into it. But we just wanted to make sure that we didn't have a house that is on a lot and the lot is just enough for the house that all of a sudden you're adding a whole nother dwelling unit and so on. And Especially for the pre-1987 lots, then, yeah. which this in effect ensures because, that we don't have a right. so, there. So, I think I think under nine point two. I think if you adopt the point well, like zero point six for one to two and the yeah. point eight three for the other one, then I think you probably change nine point two to just say the lot size shall be you know so sort of meet the requirements of section six. Yes. And then we're, and, and, then and we're state not in for section two, and then, then state in section six that if you have a duplex or and you have no more than five bedrooms and it's one four point. Whatever that number is greater, yeah. Yeah. so let me. However, that that makes sense to me. It's Scott, um, you started. You asked this question before. So, if the, under two point three of the zoning ordinance, if you have a lot that was created prior, basically a lot of record, which is basically mm -hmm. prior to uh, non-performing lot, so that's going to be one prior to eighty seven, practically speaking. Um, it basically. You know, this says basically you're limited to you're limited to two bedrooms. Your father. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, you, I think your comment was okay if a lot was created prior to '87, then there's you're saying then we then there's no minimum lot size or standard. If I understood you correctly, and it, that's actually <coughs> not. It's actually okay. this is actually saying two, but you, they'll give you right. two right. bedrooms. So, so even right. if, even if the state were to allow four bedrooms right. on that. We said that only not two. Lot, right. then it would be two. Right. Okay. And I just say you know, it's like I. Is that that nonconformity is any sort of nonconformity, right? Not just. Right. Well, no, it says if it doesn't. With requirements with, of section six. If you don't meet the requirements of section six. Oh, okay. Then, um, you're limited to two bedrooms. That's what two point three says. And I, just so you know, what I've done, always done since day one is if somebody had. And this is actually added since I've been there because so many questions came up on this. But if somebody has three quarters of the minimum lot size, mm -hmm. I, I will allow them three bedrooms. I don't actually cut them back to two bedrooms if it's, you follow what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. three quarters is three bedrooms, right? Three right, or four yeah. bedrooms. Yeah. So I've always given them three bedrooms Tough if, yeah. if right. <laughs> right. And so, so this I mean, that's something that maybe <laughs> is not exactly per the regulation, but I bounced it off the select them multiple times and everybody thought that was reasonable. So. But does that become a non-conforming lot? Well, no, it's, it's already a non-conforming lot. Right. Now, this, this also says that if the lot is non-conforming because of frontage, say, it's not limited in terms of the number of bedrooms, so long as it has... So the rights have little asterisks on them to say this is a one of these and that's a one of those, or is it you have to look at it in detail, you have to look at it. Get your engineer out and then look at it and say, Site you, got, specific. you got one of these, yeah. mm -hmm. which is why you guys get paid back. <laughs> All the surveyors, I mostly got the surveyors to put on every plan what the density calculations are. So usually when it comes in, I can just look at it. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't. So how would these restrictions apply if somebody just built a new addition and, uh, and, and maybe use that as a bar bedroom, let's say it was a two-bedroom home that's non-conforming, mm -hmm. and they wanted to put on an addition and... A performance hall, yes. A, a what? A performance hall, you know, something... Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, a den, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, room, 25 by 15. Yes. I mean, but the, let's say the intention <laughs> was to actually turn that new addition into a bedroom and maybe eliminate 
the, the one of the existing bedrooms. Well, that, 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 that happens. I mean, yeah. It, it happens pretty often. People <laughs> often, when they want to add, like, another accessory apartment, I've even seen, they they wanted to then go back in and take out, say, okay, I'm going to take out a bedroom of the house. Like Tamarack's, his house, and then his son's house. Weeder. Weeder, yeah. Mike, right. yeah, Weeder, Weeder. That, that, that was, that was yeah. an example, but they're not the... I mean, I've seen it with other situations where they weren't accessory barbecues, but they were just, right. you know, somebody wanted to add two bedrooms in a garage, you know, kitchen, so it's not an accessory part. Right. And kitchen, so then right. they said, okay, well, we're going to take out one in our house, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll put two out there and build a yeah. septic, and they got the capacity for it. So they do that. How do you take out a better? Uh, you just move the bed out? You <laughs> take the bed out. Exactly. Basically, yeah. Move it to the bed out. If they're not going to use it as a, as a bedroom. I don't think anybody's going to come around peer in the windows. To see That's my office. The but I've seen them with, with six bunk beds in the basement of the house, and they aren't counting out a bedroom. Oh, yeah. They're counting that as just a, a, a basement, but there's six bunk just beds storage. in there. It's a ski house. So people mm -hmm. come up on the weekend and they pile up, you know, they rent the house and pile in the people on the weekend. So, But it's not full time. Right. So that's the saving grace. That's <laughs> <laughs> Six thousand. They had, this the this one, they had six bunk beds in the basement. In the hallway, they had another double bed. Then they had the two bedrooms, and they wanted to add two more bedrooms in the garage. <laughs> and this is all under like a four bedroom septic system design. Right? <laughs> but and when it fails, do they have to? You know, why would it fail? They still gonna have to dig it all up and do it right. Is that right. correct? If, if it right. fails, if it fails. Right. Yeah. Right. That's always the thing, is you never know what people are really doing inside their houses anyway. It's always a... I mean, there was one... I won't go on too long here, but... <laughs> somebody complained to the, because the zoning, the zoning board didn't approve a variance for a handicap ramp, which there was another easy way to put the handicap ramp in the property and comply with the regulations. It, was, it, was, it really wasn't a hardship at all. I, I, I sided with the zoning board. This is a two, brand new two bedroom house because somebody's mother in law was going to need the handicap ramp. A so month cool. later in the paper, there was an advertisement for that house for sale. It was essentially a spec house, three bedroom house, even though it was approved for a two bedroom design. I had just approved it two or three months earlier for a two bedroom design. It was half being advertised as a three bedroom house in the paper. <laughs> they wanted to be able to sell it. Right. <laughs> or rent it out if they want. So what we do sometimes is always what happens, but... Mm -hmm. And it's not the number of bedrooms you have, it's the number of people living there right. that counts. Right. And so they're just assuming, I guess... So if you've got a garage, you've got a, a property and you have a garage, and say your father gets sick, build your garage, the garage into just a studio apartment, so he's on your property instead of on another property, and your, and your septic can handle it, and you've got the property, you can do it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the accessory part. I would just ask that because um, uh, Brooke Dodge, his mom, hey, I guess it should get worse and worse. And instead of them being at their house mm -hmm. to convert his garage into a studio apartment for his mm -hmm. mother on his property, needing to know if he can do all, you know, do what he wants to do. Depends on how big his, his lot is. His lot is, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it has to be no more than two bedrooms and no more than a thousand square feet. Right. That's the requirement. So you just have to jump through the hoops properly. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought he was living at the house. <coughs> well, he is, but the garage, his mom's getting worse and worse. So the garage, he's want, he was in the, the near future. garage at, at Brook Senior's house. Yeah. Okay. And convert that into a studio apartment. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So who knows? But again, like if, if we took a literal interpretation, he would need two dwelling units, and it's right, probably less right. likely that he could pull that off. I don't know how big his lot is. Yeah, I don't know. But if it's well, I'm pulling it up on the so map. if you if we can go the other way, that helps people out a little bit. If that's what you want to do, which would be the point six or whatever it is. So we want to take the word double. I mean, the two bedroom. What are what are we taking off of there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two times. Yeah, I think two, you just two want times. to reference okay, sections. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or two yeah. minimum lot sizes. And reference section six. Yeah. I think okay. That's what you want to do. Right, and I are people in agreement in, to in adding this language for like handling uh, the different size houses? Yeah, you know the way it is in the uh, model ordinance. It I mean, sounds like it's consistent with the logic of what we're trying to accomplish. Right, if it's, I'm hearing it correctly. 
because uh, I would be willing to draft up some language and, and bring it to the board and we can uh, just, just it. <clears throat> it's consistent with I think the way we're currently thinking it's not consistent with the way a lot of the town thinks right and so we just certainly need to be prepared for that well yeah the yeah, other thing we should also be aware of is after reading the development stuff is, <coughs> is that um, you know, thirty percent of the households have turned over in the last five years. So I'm not sure who all these folks are who are so entrenched. I mean, there, there's obviously a group that is, but um, there's an awful lot of people who are in town who have no wedding process to 20, 30, 40, 50 year old thinking either. Mm -hmm. Well, I my feeling is is if this is something that we feel is you know we're not going out on a limb. It's based on some pretty good um, you know scientific backing uh, they would just go ahead and propose it and defend it and, and let, let the town people vote so is this something you're talking about in the uh, master plan no this is the zoning this is zoning order, which and needs to be voted on by the any area. zoning changes have to be voted oh, okay. on by the town at town meeting yeah. Yeah. and so to that effect i'd say <coughs> keep it sort of in that kind of language, talking about just adopting the state standards. If we talk about this is a way of promoting increased development uh, in Jackson. I think do that. No, that, that's, no that's I, my feeling is it would be just to, to make sure that we, you know, I mean, what's happened actually is that we adopted, <coughs> we, we changed to the site-specific soil mapping standards. Mm -hmm. And we just did not get all of the pieces in there, mm -hmm. and so we're—it's not housekeeping, but it is just trying to to make sure that we have have it complete. If, if you wrote up some some language mm -hmm. for this, I think it'd be very helpful for me at least yeah. to to say, well, here's exactly where we are today. Here's what we propose, and basically, this this would be the difference. This would be the net result. Okay. Yep, and, and again, so yep. I think maybe before you put come up with actual language, mm -hmm. just sort of put that into perspective. Because again, yep. a lot of this is after what it's going to be. Yeah, a lot of yeah. this is over my head. Totally. Okay. And Barfield, Barry, you think this is what we should be doing? I don't agree with it. Well, no, I think, I think that's the reason why I'm asking. No, I do think it makes. I mean, I think okay. if you're adopting this, you might as well adopt the whole thing, right? That's okay. that's how, I'm, right. how I would look at it. Okay. And the other last component to this is commercial. the commercial side. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is a. And that again is something that um, I think got lost in the cracks when we made the changes. So. I'm sorry, what is that? Uh, we have a formula for commercial, and this is on page 10, 6.1.5 yes, yeah. for commercial uses or industrial uses, the lot size can be driven by the formula. And actually, as I look back, uh, I think this was pulled from the state, well, as I say, the administrative rules, but there is another factor in their formula, which refers back to a chart, which changes things. So I think what we need to do is um, uh, maybe lean on Burr a little here to see if we could have this maybe as what the state suggests. And then um, there is uh, a line that was in the section six before uh, 215, which said that a commercial lot cannot be any smaller than a residential lot. In other words, you take the soils on that lot and figure out is there enough for a one, you know, one dwelling. Mm -hmm. And if there um, isn't, then you can't do it. So you need to have at least as much as um, land and soils as if you were putting a dwelling unit on. So yeah, so that's your base, that that's your that's floor. That's a base, yeah. that's a floor. Base floor. Yeah. See this, 
the state's formula uses a 2,000 gallons per day in there. Basically, you can have 2,000 gallons per day per acre of land on the state's formula. So that's where the 2,000 comes in. Your, your, that does, that 2,000 doesn't work at all with this town so, formula. Yeah. And it, see, but we, and that's a good, another example of where you're trying to mix the state stuff with the yeah. town stuff. Yeah. Things get sometimes not applied exactly right. But senior minimum lot size is based on 600 gallons per day. And the way this formula is set up, if you just change that 2,000 to 600, that would say that the lot size for a commercial one would need to be, for 600 gallons per day, would need to be the same size as for 600 gallons per day for a resident. That's three and a half times, almost, right? What's that? Yeah, three and a half times yeah. more. About three and a half times larger. Right. Than, than just a, a residential lot. Well, the way it's set up now, it's a third of the size. I'm sorry. Right now, it's a third of the size. The way this formula works now, okay, let's say you have a 600 gallon per day house, right? You need one minimum lot size, right? Say it's 40,000 square feet. If you use this formula and you put 600 gallons per day in there, you need 600 divided by 2,000, so right. that's about a third. Okay. So you only need a third of the I was going the other way. I right. was exactly. yeah. 600 into 2,000. So this is saying for commercial, you only need a third of the land that you do for residential. That ain't fair. No, that doesn't make sense. No. So that's why it's definitely commercial. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to build a new gas station. <laughs> so if you put 600 in that denominator, then it would work out exactly the same as the, exactly the same as the. Unless the estimated daily discharge is less. Unless it's less, less right? Less if someone. Right. I mean, then you could have a minimum the, the, in there, what, whatever you want it to be. Let me ask just a dumb question. What defines commercial? Well, I think probably your zoning ordinance is probably what you have to look at. That is a very good okay. question. Any use or location? Let's see if we have it. Commercial use means any use involving in part or in whole the sale of merchandise, materials, or services. But not including customer home occupations is defined elsewhere. <clears throat> but if it's so if we're you're talking like, sub a tie rack in front of the building and sell but, ties and commercial. Mm -hmm. right. But if we're talking and subdivision, it's, it's it's any subdivision Our within studio. the Our commercial studio. Studio. Yeah. district. Yeah, like my house, my house is commercial residential because <clears throat> it's never been zoning. So I don't think down my sign in the front. But a lot of times, like our studios are so you don't right. have to. Yeah. But yeah, you could run uh, an art studio. It could be a home occupation too. But the, the sub in 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 the commercial district, the subdivision regulation doesn't depend on use. It depends on where the property is, right? To be in the commercial. No, if you're oh. developing within the commercial district, mm -hmm. you you have to apply. You have to you, know, you, you it's done according to the the commercial. Minimum lot size as opposed to it size. says no. it says for uses. Oh, for use, uses. really? That, that's why I was oh, asking. Okay. I'm sorry. That uses yeah. an industrial that, use. That, that's oh, why I was asking. I didn't the even, question. Sorry, I didn't I sure read understand right. how yep. that was playing through. So how do you limit if if someone were to develop a lot within the commercial district? It's not a commercial district. It's a village district. Oh, yeah. Village well, district and rural residential. Okay. Well, village <laughs> district. Sorry. Um, <coughs> which is defined only by location. Which we don't have to right. problem here for commercial. We have no land for the Are we talking commercial district? development within rural residential or commercial development? With, so if someone develops a property within the village district mm -hmm. for re residents, mm -hmm. what's to stop them from then oh, doing commercial? Making a business out of it. Nothing. So they could develop a smaller property initially as a residence within the commercial district, I mean the village district, mm -hmm. and then afterwards make it a business, even well, though they couldn't have developed that property into a home for the business in the first place. Like I, I think the like opposite would be the effect that you'd be looking to do is to have a lesser requirement. Well, I'm saying that the residential, you need, you need less property according to the, the the formula, you need less land if you're building a house within the village district than you would if you're building a business in the, in the village district, correct? 
No, no, no it's, it's the not. opposite. No. So you need a third the size of lot as you okay. would a home. Okay, I thought we... No, and, and we I need to change that. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the way it yeah. states now. So, so you, you could just say, I'm, I'm, I'm selling ties, and you can <laughs> you know, make it a two-bedroom <laughs> home that sells ties, and then yeah. as soon as you get it approved, then turn it into a two-bedroom home. Okay, well, either way. Right, right. I mean, the, the thing is, each time you do come with a new application, so we, when they go to do that change of use or whatever it is to the town, then they get re-reviewed underneath under the regulations for that new use. You know what I mean? It's not like once you get it in there, you can do whatever you want. You still each time you you come in to change. The the <laughs> <laughs> but hey, either way, it's still a good argument to make it the same for either one. Well, yeah, right? You'd like it to be the same for either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if there was something that said, okay, nitrates are less in commercial wastewater than in the other mm -hmm. one, then you could logically use a smaller lot size or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, unless you've got a lot of mercury. You can, right. <laughs> usually it's the other way around. Usually nitrates are higher at like food facilities and those yeah. things. It's usually yeah. when I've tested it for other things, it's always been much higher. But, so. so we could just change it to 600 and we're done? Uh, yeah, and get rid of that oh, part yeah. that's formula based on New Hampshire Code of Administrative Rules. And then the only that's other part is, what I'm saying is, do you want a certain minimum? So if somebody does a you know, if you do a small retail store, it's only 100 gallons per day for the state regulations. So do you, then you want to allow a lot that's one sixth of the size, I mean, a lot that's one sixth of the size. Maybe you don't want a lot that key. I don't know about you guys. So you might want to have a minimum that no case it should be less than. Yeah, what we had before, which got knocked out. For half a minimum lot size. Or, lot sizes for commercial and or industrial uses shall not be less than the minimum stipulated by the minimum lot size by cell type table. Is that in there now? No, that was there. Unfortunately, that got deleted when we changed it to um, the site specific. Was it unfortunate or was it intentional? No, it was unfortunate. It was not intentional. I mean, I would say, I mean, I don't know this is a planning issue, not a mm -hmm. one, but if, if you wanted to allow smaller commercial lots in the village district, mm -hmm. smaller than an acre or whatever the size is, then maybe you don't want to limit it, you don't want to make the minimum one minimum lot size. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to do, say, okay, then in no case, the minimum should be less, the lot should be sized by less than 300 gallons per day or something like that. Which is half. Which is half. It still meets all the you know the density requirements, but it's saying then you could have smaller commercial lots if you if you wanted to allow a bunch of little shops in the village and people wanted to have their own little lots, then you could have you know a little more villagey situation there. And then some smaller mm -hmm. lots may not be a bad thing. That's more of a planning question as opposed mm -hmm. to a engineering. It's what you guys want the village to look like. You know? So my, my feeling is gallons too. So you're right at the three hundred. Right. This I mean, you, have, out, you gotta pick out a number you think is, right, is right. reasonable. Have a look at what's there now and say, right. okay, what's what's possible, what potentially can happen. And right. because the, Not a whole the, the biggest the yeah, biggest the commercial use right. in the village is the golf course. Yeah. As far as covering land. But and I don't know about I mean all the shops. I mean, all those little boutique shops that are gonna open. But like it's small small units. There's some villages. Well, I mean, that's Wolfboro kind of thing. Yeah, Stowe. A bunch of little Stowe, Vermont would be. In. They're all in right now. Little boutiques are all over cities and everything else right now. I They're know. all in like crazy. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I've seen like some of the coast of Maine villages. That's what I'm talking about. Looking at, mm -hmm. and their minimum lot. They're on sewer, so mm -hmm. this wastewater is not an issue. But their minimum lot size is two thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. Pretty teeny. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that so there, but it makes a really Cute. Quaint, cute little yes, village character, does, yeah. if that's what you want. You know? mm -hmm. so that's what I'm saying. Maybe you don't want to go, you know, or fold in on lot size if you want to have a little bit smaller lots and more businesses. Totally up to whatever you guys want to plan. Something to think about. Right. Something to sort of look at where Jackson is now, where it could go, where it should go. That's. <laughs> Hmm. But either way, it's a 
2,000 should probably get switched to okay. 600 off the bat, and then you probably want to have some minimum to put in there to start with anyway. You know? okay. Well, I can draft um, some changes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who, who's eating? Hmm? Who's had dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions for Bert? Oh, Thank, you. Really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So Bert, that was really very good. My only question is I, I really don't know what your capacity is. I don't know He's what town engineer. Town engineer. The, your partner? Towns and Jackson's engineer. Oh, town okay. Engineer. See, I didn't I'm call know. engineer. I didn't know I'm Bartlett's engineer. And, and other engineer. towns? A couple other towns. Oh, okay. so I do very things for your very towns. So yeah. the small towns that don't aren't big enough to warrant a full time town engineer. Plus very I, good. That plus explains I, it. Plus I do design too. So oh, you're great. Try not to you're a great resource. <laughs> Thank you. I see the headaches in everybody's town. All the things that come up. Also, you know? Right. Well, it's good to have to get some feedback as to because you know none of us are engineers, right. and you know we're trying to do the best for the town and. The zoning ordinance is not cast in stone. This is very changeable. And so you propose a change to the zoning or something new to put in, and you show as many arrows in it as you can as you're trying to develop it, the once ifs, and you never get them all. Yeah. So it gets in, and then somebody comes up and says, because of your change, I can't do this. Why not? And oh, we never thought of that. If anybody's so. ever been a programmer, you know, you change it and then, oops, I didn't get this line of code over here adjusted. <laughs> and it throws out everybody who yeah. used that line of code before, and now it doesn't work. But um, I, I think the, the thing for me that's critical would be to make sure that whatever we do in making the changes um, makes it easy for people to understand what to is in here and uh, for for folks who understand what they're doing, I <laughs> uh, can say, yeah, I understand what the intention is, and it's easy enough to get at. We can look at it. We can make decisions reasonably based on the logic that's there. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there's no uh, areas where you kind of go, oh, you don't really want to, you don't really want to go to Jackson for that, because uh, they're, they, they're all screwed up. easy to do business with, even if it's not something that, you know, we all agree we don't want to have something or other uh, in town, you know, like a beer factory or something. Can you? Do you want to go into business? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. just throw it out. I don't want to make beer. I don't want to drink beer. <laughs> somebody, sure. somebody asked me the other day, um, when Taco Bell went in down there in North Conway, do we have anything to prevent that from happening here? Um, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. We actually yes. did. So it was put in way back. Um, professional and this is uh, uses permitted in the village district. Professional and or commercial businesses, except for um, to businesses primarily engaged in sales <coughs> foods, or prepared foods primarily for com consumption outside the building. Yeah, the outside part doesn't yeah. say anything about eating inside like a Taco Bell or whatever it was. Right. I got kind of upset about that. Oh, do we have anything well, to protect us? It would have to it's subjective, be just like a... But, <clears throat> I mean. uh, another restaurant is but, what it would be. A Taco so, Bell? Well, I think most yeah. people would consider Taco Bell like McDonald's as a fast food. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah. take the yeah. food away from the restaurant. Yeah, yeah what's wrong with Mexican? Well, nothing, but I didn't want to see another building that looks like that in Jackson. I mean, it's oh. like pretty snotty. Well, but, um, well you Jackson is the been architectural ordinance in Jackson, right? Not, there's no, no site plan review, and no. people have been shooting down site plan review every time it gets brought up. Yeah. So we don't have any really protection from somebody coming in and wanting to do that. Well, well I, I, said, I, think it, I don't think it would find qualify as a use. 
Why wouldn't it qualify as use? Mm -hmm. It would be just restaurants. restaurants that are takeout things, but Taco Bell would have to be within the village district. Well, I, mean, I was just using Taco Bell off the top of my head. That's right. all. But every fast food restaurant has in store seating. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think you'd still consider McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell as a place where the, the, the majority of the food is being taken. So, how about, how about Kringle? That's mostly takeout food, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Kringle's is not in Jackson. It's in Burger Oh, well, it's in Burger right. Well, exactly. That's good. But um, they have how about the Town Deli? Yeah. yeah. Grandfather. Is that? <laughs> Grandfather. I don't know. I'm being <laughs> in the devil's house. Right. Well, that's good. I mean, how, how do you define a Taco Bell or McDonald's? I, I think fast food well, chain. Yeah, I think you define it as a like a, a, a national business, a franchise, right. something like that that is not, you know, mm -hmm. an entity under its own. So I think that's how you define it. Do we need to do that? That's what I'm asking. I mean, do we need to put something in there to protect the town? I think no? well, whatever you do, you probably want to consult the town <coughs> council about it because I think there's yeah. There's some state laws and about I think not being able to discriminate against certain types yeah, of businesses. Say, you know, right. you're, you're basically saying that some businesses just can't do business in, in the state yeah. of New Hampshire and, and you're going to create a town your car. I mean, like Conway wanted to have no sexually oriented businesses in their town, but they weren't under state law allowed to do that. So then they just zoned an area that's so far off the beaten path and nobody would ever put one there that that's how they got around it. So they have a sexually oriented hmm. businesses can be in Conway, but no way would ever, but they just zoned the whole area out in the middle of nowhere where nobody would ever want that, you know. And, and we, this wouldn't work. And when we discussed yeah. that here, I think, you know, a couple of years ago, the, the thought was that in some ways by, by zoning a specific area for that type of business, you, in a way, invite that type of business. Um, and so, you know, the same thing if we were to zone in particular areas where the Taco Bell could go because we can't, you know, exclude them based on principle, that almost invites them. I mean, I think, I think the chances of a Taco Bell or any fast food restaurant opening up in Jackson are tiny. Based, so, based on the road traffic, this is a dead end. Yeah, because North, North Conway can barely support those restaurants. Even in Glen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're at the Glen Junction, that's it. Restaurant, very cool. If you put a Taco Bell there, would pay. I mean, Burger King has got, it's a got times five times, times the traffic volume that we have on 16. So, a so, uh, question I was going to ask you is in Conway, they change their zoning every year. I mean, it's always changes, like you're saying, it's dynamic, it's never, it never sits there, it's never done. But they always post, they have like two or three public hearings to mm -hmm. post the changes. And once that third hearing occurs and the planning board votes on it, that is enforced from there until the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you do the same thing here? In, That's stable. In Jackson? So you can, okay. Yeah. In that I talked to Betsy you're... about it once. She thought maybe the difference was the SB2 versus the town meeting or former uh, I wasn't sure if that was the case. I don't know. I don't know. It's my understanding that if you have a zoning um, to change for the zoning ordinance is that you can propose it up to, I think it's like two months before. It, it ends up being sometime in end of December, beginning of January, and that once it is posted as going to be on the ballot, then it is, in a sense, um, you've got to adhere to it up until it's voted on, and then if it's not voted in, then you can do whatever right. th this was prohibiting. Right. Uh, so that's... Yeah. To avoid doing it like five minutes after the vote <laughs> and keeping it out yeah. for the rest of the year. Yeah. Right. yeah, so it's because it's being proposed and just because things don't happen instantly. So I guess I'm going to ask that because I may be sticking my neck out a little bit by approving some of these ones that are not probably perfect compared to 9.2 of the two yeah, times. Two times. And so I just didn't know if it was worthwhile to try to get something done well, sooner rather than later. Than actually, you know, because it takes, us, it takes us a while <coughs> to get things in. Um, you write a draft, and then you've got to 
to work it through and wordsmith it and such on to get it. And it has to go through a couple of pu public hearings. So what do we and have our town meeting? Yeah. So it be <coughs> the earliest um, that it would be in would be next town meeting. But if we propose it before then, then it's, um, I've forgotten the number of days. It's like, a, ends up being a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think I should still be interpreting it the way I'm interpreting it? Or do you think I should not do it and then kick it to the zoning board on those ones? Well, I think yeah, that the last one. Your, <laughs> yeah, you're right. skinny to the game, too, I guess. Like well, but, but this okay. this is more, I mean, this is more really the, you know, the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen, isn't it? Right. It's because that's what you did with right. the, uh, at least the only one I'm aware of is the, the reader one, since I saw that email. In fact, there was copies of that email for right. everybody here right. last meeting. Um, that your interpretation is based on what is in the, the total right. of this, then I think there is some justification for that, and especially since we are talking about um, making sure that those aspects of the model ordinance are going to, we're going to propose those for our, our zoning ordinance. Yep. Gotcha. But don't go beyond that. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Now, if somebody comes in for a commercial use, I still have to approve it for a third of the lot size until that's changed. I mean, I mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Probably it's a little easier to be more lenient than it is to be less lenient, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Master plan. Oh, it would be so nice to get this final one. <laughs> so I have um, all the changes. Did I'm just going to run my car. I don't you have copies here. This is a copy. Those are the pages, all the pages that were changed. Okay. <coughs> and, I'm going to give you this one because that, that was my original. Yeah. Oh, they're for everybody? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Thank you. But it's just the pages that have changes in them that um, okay. are marked in red, and then when it got photocopied, uh, I saw, oh, 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 it's, it's gray. And uh, so what I did was just uh, put arrows on it before it was photocopied. And uh, so we can just real quick go through changes. Um, on the first page there, it, I think all that was added is that copy is of the analysis as the background studies, and if you look, the last three pages of your of the handout is the highlights, um, which was on in color on a legal size paper, so Phil Davies was kind enough to dig out the file, change it to black and white, and put it in Word and send it to me, and I rearranged it so that it would fit on standard uh, nine and a half, eight and a half by eleven sheets. So that's just exactly the same as that um, the two-page handout that we have, which is a summary of the surveys, uh, a summary of the results of the survey. So then. And uh, last meeting we went through all of Tara Bamford's suggestions mm -hmm. and so we uh, eliminated the phrase transfer of development rights uh, from that objective because it wasn't possible. And I think these other, on page five, um, again impact fee ordinance was going to be more trouble than it's worth, I think, is what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And then continue to provide adequate space because 
or a sales or sailing well as well. If you don't have adequate space, what are you planning to do? But so by saying continue to, that yeah. indicates that things are all right now. People always do it. Yes. Okay. And then the uh, page eight. This is a policy I think that Betsy added in. Um, based on our discussion last time. I do have a question on that one, though, because um, um, people today, well, she said that you have solar panels in your house, mm -hmm. and um, heading up home one day, I saw a geothermal truck up there mm -hmm. up on the side of the road there. So people are familiar with this stuff. Is this part of the long range the regulatory goal? Um, do you think we're. Um, um, correct words to use for that. Do you think that um, possibly um, we're outdating ourselves because this is already going on right now as far as possible goals go? Um, no, in that the objective, if you see a first objective, land use impacts of large scale wind and solar facilities. So it's like a wind somebody, farm. Somebody like comes in and wants to put a whole line of uh, wind turbines along the whole ridge you know, say behind Black Mountain, That'd be hard all the way along. Okay, and it's not <laughs> just the view of the the wind turbines, but also to get them up there, you've got to massive create a road. huge, a massive road. You've got to be able to service them, so there'd be a huge um, swath cut along where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is an environmental impact, even. Or yeah, Betsy that. and Sam decide they want to put a solar farm in. <laughs> yes. In the field. In the field. In the yeah. field. Yeah. Right. So just to um, have a look at it, see if there is a, a need, a need to put regulations on, like we put the regulations on um, cell towers. So you can't prohibit them, but you can regulate them. You can regulate them. Okay, and that's what that says. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's all I need to know. Just <laughs> take the part. <laughs> Right. Fair enough. <laughs> I had to get my plug in as to. I just wanted to make sure we were protecting this element. Yeah. And I wasn't quite sure. I, I, I so think this that is actually, this is it's the only comment we've made in, in here toward that. And to the extent that it is unregulated to a large degree, um, if we don't address it in some way, we expose ourselves to the opportunity. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's fine. I just want to, like I said, protect yeah. it to make sure we. It's probably something we should look at. <laughs> okay. I just meant I just didn't know we were, you know, being old-fashioned by saying this needed to be, you know, part of no. our goals and no. As far going. as individual ones, uh, I, you know, I think we should be all for it. Mm -hmm. I do too. So My it's feeling is, is not the wind thing. Though. Fly, get on an airplane, and fly over an urban area, see all of this roof. Just think if you had solar panels on all of that, how much energy we mm -hmm. could save and power plants, etc. You still need the power plants for industry and so on, but right. for resident use, residential, residential, yeah. residential commercial use, you could really cut down on the amount of not Well, so the panels have become cheaper. <laughs> they have, actually. Have they? Oh, yeah, they're a lot cheaper now than they were several years ago. I haven't looked into them. No, they're not very like <laughs> <laughs> It's not like candy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, then page 11 was just a language clarification. And then, so page 9, and now we're getting into, right now we're into the background studies, changes, and like Betsy added a Stormwater management. Um. 
kind of think this is stemming from all of the discussion that we had in, uh, just to give you a little history, we were wrestling with the fact of trying to get a ridge line or a steep slope ordinance and we ran into all sorts of roadblocks and one thing led to another and then we um, sort of focused in on preventing erosion and soil loss. This, um, when you do construction and development on steep slopes, you get a lot of erosion. And so that was uh, the direction that the planning board went as far as trying to regulate. And so I think what Betsy's doing is just adding this reference. Because mm -hmm. Sarah had mentioned stormwater management, right? Have, I, I mean, uh, to me, it seems a little odd. It just seems sort of plop there in the middle of everything. <laughs> I, I think I do remember Tara mentioning some water management okay. was something that she thought at least needed particular yeah, consideration. Stormwater management is something that's more of an issue in an urban setting where you have yeah. all sorts of uh, impervious. Yeah. And I can see, you know, surface. wetlands as being somewhat part and parcel to, you know, preserving the town and the character of the town. And, you know, from water management, it sounds like it really doesn't. Have we had any issues where this is arisen as a problem? Or? Only where, you know, I think things were clearly done below standard mm -hmm. either construction going on where you know it wasn't managed properly during the construction phase or some no silk fencing put up some you know or some roads that were put in you know before we had road standards I, that I think there's some improved. issues on Tyro right. where it was very steep and yeah. somebody was doing putting in a house and the house below was uh, getting all mm -hmm. all sorts of so there's an opportunity, at least, for there to be a problem. In yeah, I just I see it as more of a specific issue as opposed to a town-wide mm -hmm. concern. But I don't see any problem having it there. It just seems a little kind of out of place. But well, but where would you put it? <laughs> <laughs> if not there, where would you put it? Well, no, I, I, I just. I, don't really see it as a master plan, kind of. Well, there's a lot of things in here that are. <laughs> if you, I, I took the opportunity. I mean, I mean if, if it were a concern, and you know, part of our plan was to address the concern, then know, it would more be forcefully in, than we are. Then yeah. Then, then it would be in the, right. the, the first section, right? Yeah. Right. But I, I think uh, I took the opportunity to read a couple of other master plans between last meeting and this, and ours is quite condensed. Mm -hmm. Comparatively, um, the, the number of pages and the topics that are addressed, uh, some of them are uh, unbelievably complex and, mm -hmm. and, and full um, in terms of what they do address. And you would think that they intended to get close to biblical in terms of mm -hmm. providing all the sites and mm -hmm. things that have been touched ever. <laughs> um, and would these be larger gas in the plants? No, no, I looked at other communities oh, yeah. because... Are I, they larger yeah. communities? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of the uh, difference. Yeah. Also, people have more resources to create these things and actually mm -hmm. will engage professionals in addition to uh, having uh, volunteer staff uh, assembling them. Uh, and the more dollars available in the budget, the more pages there are in the darn plan, so, um, but this would be, this would be a, this one of the baseline items. This would be one of maybe two or three hundred baseline items that would be in the plan. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to address wetlands, you should address all water flows, and we don't address every water flow. But we don't have that many water flows. <laughs> well, we do, actually, and, and we don't. We, we are very uh, limited in terms of what we describe 
for, mm -hmm. for how our water is used and, and, and what plans we have relative to water. We just assume it's there. Considering the shortage we have right now, the streams are all really dry and a mess yeah. right now. Yeah, people's wells are drying yeah. up. Yep. <coughs> I thought mine did a couple weeks ago, but it was just my breaker. My 100 amp breaker went. There's a cheap pick saying, God. <laughs> and so there goes, I thought it was my public, there goes 1500 bucks. Yeah. If I would have, if I could have pulled it up, I would have pulled it up myself. I, I don't know. All right, moving along. Uh, in the, we're in the changes that were done in the background information and Tara had uh, probably her major criticism was that uh, when Betsy did the population section that uh, she was mixing two different estimates, the, uh, the census mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the, so both the, the federal uh, Census Bureau publishing the American Community Survey and then also the uh, population estimates that's done by the state, uh, the Office of Energy Planning and Planning. And so what I think what Betsy tried to do is just to use the information from the uh, American Community Survey since that was uh, much more detailed. And the question I have is regarding the fact that there's such a disparity in the numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. between 1033 and 833, I'm getting that right, 1033 and 1030, uh, 1032 and 833, certainly. Right. Uh, that's 200 people in a town of very small means. But that sounds ridiculously wide. If it was 8, 10, 15 off, I'd say, okay, uh, that depends on who responded to what. But uh, 200? Right. Uh, that was my, my feeling with the, the American Community Survey, is that they're looking at the whole country and applying an algorithm for mm -hmm. figuring out what population. And so therefore, when you get down to the size of population that's Jackson, uh, it's full of error. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I would think um, mm -hmm. use a proportion. People that walked in. We have the ten thirty two on a school vacation week. So whether we want to use this or not, um, too bad Betsy isn't here tonight because she could, because she's the one who did all the research on that section. Um, so do we want to leave that in or should we just <coughs> truncate it? I, mean, I think it's confusing to show both. Be nice to know, you know, sort of which. You know, like, probably give the nod to the Office of Energy and Planning. Yeah, I would, because it seems to be more accurate. Yeah. I, I, I have mixed feelings. I, I, I have a problem of just trying to deal with the fact that there's so much difference in the gross numbers, and, and yet the specificity of some of the data um, mm -hmm. could have some value in terms of taking. You know, demographics and understanding, yeah. you know, kind of who we are. Uh, but if it's really wildly wrong, then, right. then, then you have that feeling like, ah, should I really be looking at this? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and then Tara also mentioned that there was, uh, that they had, North Country Council had um, done a regional survey, of, had a lot of regional data and suggested that we use it. And I actually didn't look it up, but whether that would be better. Did Tara indicate whether she felt 
ACS or OEP is one is no, better than the she other. Didn't. Maybe that's a question. She just said. Her. She just said, you know, you've got both of these here. Right. It's confusing. <laughs> so this is what Betsy added to it. Um, well, I mean, is it really something we have to decide right now? I mean, it would seem to no. me that if Betsy's the one that came up yeah. with this yeah. information, why don't we defer until, you know, she's here to give us a more educated opinion as to what. Uh, right. I agree with that. Right. We just been working on this for how many years? It's done, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Yes, we need to, that's one piece that we'll need to discuss see how we want to handle that. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting information to know, but I mean, I don't know that it serves Does any absolute practical. No, it's also right. available on the internet, so anybody who really is looking for this data can find it, and then they will then say that data that's available on the internet conflicts with your master plan, and you are willing to use other resources and you're using only this resource which seems to be a little bit more conservative perhaps or whatever. Right. Well, actually, However which way you want to measure that. What makes more sense is on what's on page 12 and that's the actual census data. From 90, 2000 and 2010. And so that, I think that makes sense. If you to use actual data rather than estimates. So perhaps we need to just eliminate the information on page 11 unless. It'd be helpful on that, the US Census data to have totals. What totals? Total population. Oh, just add the add the column. Yeah. No, we can do that. I wonder if that how different that third number would be. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do it in a second, but we see right, what we have to do. We don't have 2010 for the other two, right? Poverty status in 2014, getting a 31.5% of our families are in poverty level. For Patreon? Uh, just to follow the administrative services and facilities section. Oh, okay. 17. Okay. Oh, that's okay. You're skipping ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, what criteria is this based on? Does it tell us? I mean, the U.S. standard of no, it's, poverty? It's based, on a, well, it's based on a sample of residents, and it doesn't say specifically what that. It, it, it's not clear. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, yeah. it's okay. data, but it's. Where did it incorrect come from? data. Where did it come from? Uh, it, doesn't, doesn't it doesn't sound right. I, it, yeah, I think if it is right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah. I was like, all of these firefighting, things. police, and law enforcement services from Jackson 13. 2004, we had 23 members of the fire department. Well, I think we really need to have Betsy here to talk about what she has added and how. Um, all right, so that would be for the sections 
the population, housing, and employment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, employment and income. So I would, um, my recommendation would be to use the data that we know is for real as right. opposed to somebody in the middle of the country making estimates yeah. about us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it might be interesting to look at the different propor proportions, but I think the, uh, it's, the data so not so always skewed. seem to be too great. Right. Okay. As far as um, new building units, this is all um, town of Jackson building permits issued on page 14. Right now. And 14. yeah, 14 the new one. So. My feeling is let's use the data that is um, for real as opposed to the estimates. No. Yeah. So that means we'll need to change a little bit of that. And so that's data for building permits for subdivisions approved. That's just the way it is. And then on the bottom of 15, Again, that is present data. Page 16, that's, it's, that comes from a sampling of residents. So gives somewhat an idea of the employment. And poverty status, I assume that's from the same source, which is what you were what you were just mentioning a little while ago. But poverty status for families. As opposed to poverty status for the whole population. Mm -hmm. Oh, the total number of that, that's a lot. 31.5% of Jackson residents are in poverty. No, of, it says for families. For families, so it's, it suggests that 27, 28 families are, uh, that live in Jackson uh, live in, at the poverty level. Well, it's fine hard, hard to believe anyway. I mean, that's, right. that's really a lot. Well, it seems that way. That's why I say it popped out. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be more than that. I mean, if you're talking 311 families and you got 31 percent, that's more than. So more than some. That's more than 25, 27 families. Right. If you want, yeah, it's 92 families. If you look at it that way, then that there is that. It's almost the same number as you know, related children for 18 years. It's, it's, Again, it looks to me like a statistic that uh, nobody knows where it came from, mm -hmm. and you know why even have it in there if you can't substantiate it. This right. And it could be a typo for all we know. Yeah, I, it, you know. Okay, it, we need to check that one. And there's a number because there's families, it's but the, the other three don't. The other three don't add up to that. So that is that separate from the other three. Right. There's families, yes. families with own or related children under 18 years, families. Right, we no. need to find out where that's from. I mean, and if it's bogus, then we throw it out. Because families with female household or no husband present 38, that 
I mean, I'd read Who came this. Up with that? The the dirty, right. And 18 of those have yeah. children under 18 years old, if I'm reading that correctly. And of the families, 92 families have children under no. 18 years old. I mean, we don't miles. have that many kids in the school. Uh -uh. So okay. that, okay. Yeah, Agreed. Well, Questionable. <laughs> Let's move on. But, and not an attractive figure either. Mm -mm. No, and I don't think it's I mean, right. I, I, if it was rosy, I wouldn't have met a jet, but it's not a <laughs> loser. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay if it's a good line. <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> right. Then jumping ahead from maybe, maybe it's seven. just, you know relative to Jackson's own poverty standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rule footnote. Yes. <laughs> if you don't own three cars, you're right. poverty. Right. You put me on that list. <laughs> put me on that list. <laughs> yeah. Most of us then. Okay, um, and then in the roads section, Tara said, well, what you've got, you've got a scenic byway. So, okay, state. Scenic byway. I had to add that. Mm -hmm. And then police department activity. I've just added the 2015 numbers um, for that. And the, that's straight off the town of books. Yes, the right off the books. Right the book. the right off the books. Yeah. And, and then so, no information was, for criminal cases. <coughs> no, that worked. Well, right. There, there wasn't anything about the criminal cases. That data was lent, was not in the book. Uh, so, so maybe we need to. Maybe we need to correct that out a little okay. bit. Okay. Because it seems like we right, from forty to nothing. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna be a yeah. couple. Right. Because they had the break in last year, and I guess this year I found um, Carver Notch. That situation to go out and get up there. All right, so we'll need to fill that in. I agree. And then on the fire department, it was just uh, in the way that section was worded, where she was saying, well, what are we going to do about it? And it actually isn't a problem because. That works. This week has a mandate. And then I added again the information from the town reports. Our and numbers are down this year. I think we only even hit half our calls of what we had last year. Which is good. Yeah, that's like, that's is, good. Yeah. It's good and bad. Because then you don't stay in the groove, you know? Well, if you don't. They're all practicing in the group. Right, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it, it's good and it's bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's also the, the uh, town finances section, which isn't in what I just showed you, but we have the update, which I received as an email this morning. So obviously it's not <laughs> in the report, which we'll add. So other than the population, uh, section and the poverty section. Yeah, it was the rest of the section. Yeah. Can we agree to the wording changes and just not deal with the statistics? The right. Well, we'll need to <coughs> clear that up before we can. So, if everybody's happy with all the other stuff, then we'll just have that is acceptable for into the the final draft, and then clean up those two sections and then maybe we can vote it in. Oh God, I'm so <laughs> and I've I've got to check do we need if we need to have a public hearing before we vote. Public hearing on it. I'll have to check the RSAs. And if we do, then we'll have a public hearing. And anybody who but wants I, to I mean isn't this a public hearing anyway? No, okay, the no, board has a public, public meeting. Oh, yeah. you don't? Okay. It's yeah. a public meeting. Anybody yeah. can come and listen. Right. But public hearing, it's, uh, it has to be posted, posted. and announced. Okay. And yeah. Then we give them tomatoes on the way in and mm -hmm. charge on the way out. 
Okay. So, do we, is there any other business to come before the meeting? Okay. Entertain a motion. We don't have Dick here to put his hand on. <laughs> and will we adjourn? I second it. Uh, I All agree. in favor? I agree. Uh, okay.